Hello, welcome again to another event, a Prophecy Fulfilling. Today I want to talk to you about a little bit about something totally different. And it's talking about the three books. And I want to explain a little bit to y'all what it means. Some of y'all may have heard it, some of y'all may not have heard it. But there's three types of books that God will judge us on. The Book of the Liberty, the Book of Remembrance, and the Book of Life. And there's an angel that records everything we say, everything we do, and everything we think. Believe me, believe me we, can't pass, we can't bypass it. So, I want to talk about the first one. The Book of Life. <clears throat> the book of life is when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when you overcome sin, your name is in the book of life. Turn me to Revelation chapter 3. It's a very short verse. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 And he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life but I will confess his name and before my father and before his angels and he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. After Christ had ascended into heaven, he went directly to the sanctuary, the heavenly sanctuary. And that's where he's been since 1844. And he's cleansing us and he's making preparation and he's, he's cleaning all the garbage off of us. And when we accept him and we believe in him and we repent of our sins, our name stays in the book of life. But if you don't accept him, your name will be blotted out. And that's not good news. The next one is called the Book of Liberty, which is also known as the Ten Commandments. Y'all should know them. Don't, don't worship or, or bow down to idols. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't kill. Don't use God's name in vain. Uh, don't accuse anyone falsely. Honor thy mother and thy father. You know, y'all know, y'all should know those. Those are, those are basically Ten Commandments. There's ten of them. Remember the Sabbath day, which is Saturday. Keep it holy. Don't work on the Sabbath. You know, Saturday is not the Sabbath. That's a total, for a totally different subject. Um, you know, don't lie, don't steal, don't kill. Well, all those are considered the Ten Commandments. And it's also known as the, the Book of Liberty. Which the commandments is a mirror image of who God's character is. And who we ought to be like. And that's, that's very important in the last days too. And Revelation 22.14 is tied in with that. Revelation 22.14 Now you've heard, you've probably heard many people say it's impossible to keep God's commandments. No, it's not impossible. It's hard. But it's not impossible. But in Revelation 22, 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, and that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. If we keep God's commandments, we shall make it in heaven, and we shall walk through the city, and we may have the right to the tree of life.
and um, that forced out of the Book of Remembrance, Malachi chapter three. Malachi chapter three talks is is uh, the the Book of Remembrance is for those who chose to come back to God and still rebelling against Him, and He will remember that, and He will reward you for that, and still turn, and still continuously turn away from God, and you turn back to God, that's also recorded. It's also recorded that if you continuously not to come to God, but if you choose to go your own way, which leads to destruction. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Then they that feareth the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name, and they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. And in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him, then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. So when you, so when you serve God, when you, turn, when you fear the Lord, there's going to be a book of remembrance to those who do serve God and those who don't serve God. Those who fear God and those who don't fear God. And so he will separate them. And for those that do fear God and, and serve Him, they will be remembered. Versus the one that doesn't will be destroyed. And you know, and part of the, the part of the thing is, you also have to be baptized and be converted over. And that's part of being overcome with sin. Is overcoming sin is by washing away your sins, being baptized. It's all required. Um, Acts two thirty eight says it. And then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. So being baptized is part of it. Mark 6, 16, 16. Baptism is very, it's very important. It's part of it. Mark chapter 16, verse 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So baptism is very part, is part of the, the Christian walk. It's part of being living a life that Christ wants you to live. Baptism is a sign of the burial and the risen resurrection and the cleansing of sin. Um, when you're when you go under water, your old man, your old self is dead. It's buried. When you rise up, you become a new creature in God's eyes. And that's how baptism is a symbolic symbol. And when you are buried, your old self is buried. You rise up, you become a new creature. Colossians 2. Colossians 2.12 Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you were risen with him, through, his, through the faith of the operation of God, 
he who has raised him from the dead, that you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having, having forgiven you all your trespasses, and blotting out, out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So whenever we are buried, or whenever we are baptized, all of our sins is done away with. They're nailed to the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, they was nailed with him. And last but least, John 3.3 3 talks about being converted and being born again. That's also part of being a Christian. You have to be born again. And being born again means you change your lifestyle. You change who you are. You change your ways. You change how you think. You know, you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you want to follow Him. And that's all part of the Christian walk. And John 3.3 3 makes that very clear. And I'll read that to you. Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus says how, unto him, How can a man be born again, born again when he is old? Can he enter his second time in his mother's womb or be born? And Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You have to be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. It makes that perfectly clear. And Matthew 18. Matthew 18 verse 3. Talk, Jesus talks about that we must be converted. Very, very, I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to be converted. And so, these are important steps. Be baptized, be born again, be converted, all of it, and, you know, and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Overcome sin with Keep the commandments of God. These are all very important steps. So I urge you. God bless you.